What's up guys, today I'm gonna show you how to connect any kind of ready control to your PC so you can use them for your simulators. Let's get started. There are plenty of options to connect your ready control to the PC and use it with your favorite simulator. I will show you all of these options, from a very simple one to a more complicated one involved in the Arduino. But it doesn't matter what option you choose, all of them work great. For the first option, I'm using a software called Smart Propo Plus. It's completely free and you will find a link in the description below, so you can install it and follow the next steps. This software converts the PPM signal and turns them into joystick signals, so you can use it in your favorite simulator. So your computer will see it as an external joystick or gaming device. By the way, PPM stands for Pulse Position Modulation, and this is a standard widely used in RC model airplanes. It's a serial signal, so we just need one wire to transmit it. But to send the signals from our radio to the software, we need to connect it to the computer. And for that, we're going to use an auxiliary audio cable. That's because this software uses the microphone input from the computer to detect the signals. This is the normal input jack that you will find in MP3 players, which is 3.5 millimeters. So you don't need a fancy cable. So I have this cable that I took from an old set of earphones, and this is a stereo. If you have a mono one, it's even better, but it doesn't matter, because we are going to identify the channels. But before continuing, this video is brought to you by JLC PCB, a company specialized in the production of high-quality PCBs in large and small quantities. And by the way, they will be present at the ROM Maker Fair 2019, from the 18th to the 20th of October. And they asked me to tell you that you're welcome at their booth to meet them personally at the booth 8F43 to obtain coupons and special free gifts. Let's continue with the project. To identify the cables of the connector, we're going to use the multimeter in the continuity mode. After identifying them, we're going to separate ground from the other two channels. We can join together the two channels because we only need a mono signal. So now we only have two cables. So I'm going to solder two connectors, one to ground and the other to the signal wire. And now this goes connected to the radio, ground to ground, and the signal wire goes to the PPM output of the radio. Ideally, we should use a special connector for this, but because I don't have one, I will just plug the connectors where needed. So in the Flysky i6, we connect ground to ground, which is the external ring, and the signal to the PPM output, which is that pin over there. If your radio is a different brand, then you have to figure out which connector it uses and which pin is which. There are radios like this one that already have an audio jack output, so the process is very simplified because you can use an auxiliary audio cable. Once we have connected everything, we turn on our radio and create a new model, especially for the simulator. And then you will see that the software will recognize all the channels. So now we can use the simulator. We do the setup of our new radio in the simulator and calibrate all the channels. And after this simple process, we can enjoy. As you can see, it's super simple and also very economical. This also works if you have a receiver with PPM output. That way, instead of connecting the radio, you connect the receiver and you can play wirelessly. It's a lot more comfortable and stylish. The only thing is that you have to feed 5 volts to the receiver through an USB port using an old USB cable, or you can also use a separate battery for that. Well, that was the first option. The next option will give you more flexibility. In fact, it's several options in one. But you will need an Arduino Uno, Arduino Nano, or any kind of Arduino with an USB port. You will need to install the Arduino IDE, which you can download from the description below, and you can even use an FTDI adapter, which is even simpler because you don't have to upload any software to it. And the main software we're going to use for this, it's called VJoy, which doesn't have anything to do with me or the channel, but it's free and you can download it also from the description below. You will also need a plugin or an extension for VJoy called VJoy Serial Feeder. So first of all, download and install VJoy. VJoy is a driver, so after the installation, you don't need to worry about opening it again. And then we're going to download the latest version of VJoy Serial Feeder. 
and after extracting all the files into a folder, we can open the executable file. This will bring up the main window and you have to leave it open when you're using your simulator. This simple but powerful software will turn the signals from your radio or receiver to joystick signals. But let's take a look at the available options. In the protocol options we have iBus, Keys, MultiWii, SBus, DSM, and dummy. We're not going to use that last one, but the rest are all the protocols supported by this software, which is a really wide range. For now we're going to use iBus because we are using a FlySky radio. With the protocol MultiWii we can use our drone or any receiver connected to a flight controller and that gives us a lot of flexibility on using any radio. So if you don't have an Arduino you can use any flight controller, set it up and fly on your simulator. But now let's prepare our Arduino to take the iBus signal and send it to our computer. Open the Arduino IDE and connect your Arduino. On the Arduino IDE, make sure to select the right board and also the COM port is selected. Then go to File, Examples, EEPROM and select EEPROM Clear. This will bring up a new sketch. That's the one you have to upload. So go ahead and do that and after uploading it, you are done. Now let's take our receiver and connect the wires to the iBus port. The connections are very simple. I'm using some jumper wires to connect it to the Arduino. So make sure you are using the iBus port and your receiver is bound to the radio. Then connect ground or the black wire to any ground on the Arduino. The signal wire goes to the TX or pin number 1 in the Arduino. And to feed the receiver with 5 volts, we connect it to the 5 volts pin. Then we have to open VJoy Serial Feeder, hit connect and start adding axes. Choose a different channel and axis for each one, and then you're good to go. You can also calibrate each axis if you wish to do so. Now that this is ready, we leave it open. And now we open our favorite simulator and do the whole process of adding a new radio and calibrating it. If you're using an FTDI, you can skip the Arduino part because you don't need to upload any software. This does the job directly. You only need to be aware of connecting the wires to the right place, which is ground to ground, to power the receiver goes to VCC, and the signal goes to RX. And that's it, connected to the USB and you are ready. I also mentioned that you can use your drone. So connect it to the USB port, open the VJoy serial feeder, choose the right COM port, the protocol should be multi-Wii and hit connect. And that's it. As you can see, it's very easy. Just be aware that some drones won't power the receiver by the USB port, so you will have to connect the battery. In that case, you should remove the propellers of the motors, since the drone will behave just like if it was flying. And if you ask yourself, what happens if I have a radio control that is so simple that doesn't have any output to connect it to the computer? Well, in that case, there is a solution. I have several radios like that, and I will show you how to deal with that. For this, again, we need an Arduino. But this process is a little bit more complicated and extended, so you have to be aware of it. But it's worth it if you don't want to buy a new radio. So I opened this radio, and what we need to do is identify all the potentiometers. Each joystick or gimbal has two potentiometers, and each potentiometer has three connectors, so you can easily identify where the potentiometers are connected. What I'm going to do is solder some wires to the potentiometers to connect them to the Arduino following this diagram. You will find this diagram and more information on how to do this in the link in the description below. So I'm going to download the Arduino code that will interpret these signals and turn them into an iBus signal, so then the VJoy Zero Feeder can interpret it. I strongly recommend going to the original page of this project so you can see the tutorial on how to work with this code and see an example. And it's a good moment to tip the creators of this project. After uploading the code and making the connections, we connect it to the computer and as you can see, it works really good. So I have proven to you that you can use virtually any radio to connect it to the computer and use it for the simulators. And to finish this video, we have the last option, which is of course buying the adapter, which is available on many online stores like Banggood, eBay, Amazon and others. If you want to buy it to save some time, I'll leave the link in the description below. In case you have a radio control with an USB port like a Tyrannis or a Jumper, you have the option to use them as joysticks. But in the latest versions of Windows, there is a problem with the driver that won't let you use the radio as a joystick. But this is extremely simple to solve. 
I'll leave a link in the description below for this problem and how to solve it. It literally takes just a few seconds to solve. Once again, thank you to JLCPCV for sponsoring this video. I really hope you have found this video really helpful and I'll see you in the next project.